First of all, I would like to apologize for not being here. I had a horrible bug that was going around and I'm still struggling from it. Um, so I wanted to make sure you all understood what you needed to do for the career shadow. And so here's my information. First off, you need to go to Moodle. And in Moodle, you need to make sure that you go into the career shadow documents. It's a whole list of things that you need to have. And I believe you need the first five documents downloaded to your um, iPad. So make sure that you can use all of these documents offline because you may not be able to use them when you are um, at your workplace if you don't have Wi-Fi. So download all of the documents. They are the first five, and I'm actually going to go through each one of them for you. So download the first five documents under Career Shadow, and uh, we'll talk about each one. So please pause this program so that you can make sure everyone in the class is downloaded. Make sure you help everybody find them. The Career Shadow documents, they should be the first five. Put all five inside of your iPad, and please stop the tape. And when everyone is all loaded, then go ahead and turn off your iPads, and you can listen to the rest of this presentation. So the first document that you're going to be dealing with is the Tips for Successful Career Shadow Primary Research Day. And it really is a primary research day. You are actually out there collecting the very best data on um, the person that you're shadowing. So please remember that uh, you're watching communication skills that we've been learning in class actually out on the workplace. And also finding out about careers in a 100 mile radius of Perm. Also remember that you are representing Perm High School. Very few people let you out of the building and you're out all day and you're representing yourself, your family, you're representing Perm High School and definitely our class. So please remember that people are watching you and do the best that you can do. When you are doing that out there, please remember that you should be dressed up for the actual business that you're at. Um, maybe you are out driving around delivering propane. Well, then you dress appropriately for the weather. If you're in uh, an office building, make sure you dress up, no jeans, uh, no tennis shoes, make sure you look nice. Ask the person that you're shadowing what you should be wearing for that day if you have any question. I've had situations where people dressed up, but they um, dressed up with, uh, um, uh, as Perm High School would dress up, like a student many years ago, uh, she went over to the middle school to shadow a, a middle school teacher, and she dressed up as I asked her to, but she dressed up with um, spaghetti straps and on a shirt and a very uh, short skirt. And um, that was before we kind of had our dress code. It was May, she was very cute, and she looked wonderful for Perm High School, but apparently the boys at the middle school were um, taken with her, I guess, and they sexually harassed her to the point where parents had to be called in. So did she dress up? Yes, but did she dress up appropriately for the workplace? No, she did not. Um, so be really careful of what you wear, and um, never should she have been sexually harassed, that's for darn sure, based on what she wore. But again, just be thinking about what you're wearing and that people do take a look at you and do judge you, and you are shadowing somebody that um, has a reputation in that business. Think about, you would not want anyone shadowing you to dress inappropriately or draw attention to you either. Um, number four. Please make sure you bring your own money for a lunch or snacks or food. I know you're probably shadowing a parent or guardian, but just double check. Make sure that you have um, money. You don't have to keep asking them for money all the time because, again, they are at their work site. Don't think about them as your uh, parent or guardian. Think of them as um, a person that you're shadowing in a workspace. Um, also, I have a story about a student um, that went over. I told you about the student who went over to the architecture place and was having a great day. Um, loving the fact that he was learning about architecture. And he, uh, the secretary at the time said, hey, I'm going to go over to Hardy's. Hardy's was actually in town at that time, and grab lunch. What would you like? And he said, oh, no, that's fine. Thank you. And she said, no, really, I'm going to go get lunch for everybody. What do you want? So he gave her order, and she came back and gave everybody their lunch. And then she says, well, that's $5.32. And he didn't have any money. He thought she was purchasing it for him. And then she, he apologized immediately and said, oh, I'll bring money right after school. But she was mad, and she was like, just like, oh, you know, you young people, blah, blah, blah. And it was horrible. So he had a great day with the architect, but not so great with the secretary. So please just make sure that you're thinking about all the different people that are in a workspace. Um, number five, you don't need to bring pen, paper, or, or any packet anymore. All your packet is inside the iPad. 
please make sure that the iPad is charged. Um, you don't want to be asking people if you can charge your iPad. People in the community are really watching how you use the iPads. And if you're you know, playing or gaming or anything like that, they're going to notice that. So please use it as an um, educational tool. Again, people are watching you. And um, please put yourself in the best light and the technology and our class. Number six, be polite and courteous. You guys are all very polite and courteous. But you know what? You're learning how to shake hands and um, using those persuasive words, you know, shake hands. Thank the person that you're shadowing. Thank the boss for letting you be there. You're networking and maybe, you know, creating a possible um, job for yourself in the future if you'd ever want one. But for sure, putting that person that you're shadowing in a very positive light. Number seven, please remember that other employees are affected by your shadowing. Um, most people are so excited to see you there. They're just pumped that you're in there. But be really careful because some people get, you know, a little bit more anxious and uh, you might be in their space. So don't do anything to cause them trouble. Also, um, number eight, when you have food or drink, say you have a soda or something, you know, even water, make sure you know it's okay to bring that in different places. Sometimes people, um, shops, you can have coffee wherever you want to go and sometimes you can't have anything anywhere. So again, please make sure that you know... Um, the rules of that location. Also for uh, number eight, uh, again, just make sure you really do ask if it's okay to have any snack or food or drink in the area. And don't be bringing, um, you know, asking for money all the time. Again, you are um, distracting the person that you are shadowing. Number nine, your day starts when that person's day starts. So if they start at 7 a.m. and finish at 7 p.m., that's your day, unless you have an extracurricular activity or you have to work, but other that, otherwise, whatever their hours are, that's their hours and that's when you shadow. If their hours are less that day, don't feel bad about that, that is your day. Um, again, if you'd like to shadow two people because one uh, works in the morning, the other works in the afternoon, that's fine too. 10, be safe. Sometimes people ask you to you know, do something outdoors or something that might not be as safe, just make sure that you are safe at all times. Number 11, uh, you may help the person that you're shadowing. You can help them. Uh, you can, uh, you know, file something or read something or do whatever you need that, you know, they need you to do. But please make sure that you're keeping an eye on your person. It is like you are a scientist and you have a lab rat and you are watching that lab rat, not that you're person you're shadowing is a rat, but you're watching them and you're collecting data on them. So you need to be watching them at all times and there'll be more details about that coming up. Number 12, confidentiality. Please make sure that you do not share embarrassing things um, about people or talk about others either at the workplace or when you return if something happened. You need to be discreet and know that the people trust you that you're there um, at the business. Also, sometimes you're not allowed into a meeting because it is confidential. Um, just again, take as many notes as you can. Um, ask if you could do something to help them out while they're in their meeting and then go back to watching them when um, they return. Also, if you are at um, the schools shadowing somebody, please ask them at lunch if you can go in and, and uh, sit with them during lunch. They may say, oh no, just sit out here with the students. But um, I would ask again because Teachers in the uh, faculty workroom um, do behave differently, and it's kind of nice to see that side of them. But don't push it if they don't really want you there. Thirteen, um, this is worth 100 points. All this data that you're going to be collecting um, on Monday is worth 100 points, so you want to make sure every single thing is filled out, and we're going to talk about those things in just a moment. And if you can, send a thank you note. There's nothing wrong with that. It's very professional. And at the end of the day, make sure you tell the person that you shadowed thank you, even if it's a parent or guardian, and for sure the business place that um, you really appreciated the time. Next, uh, the next document is your uh, research log, and we're going to look at what types of communication are really important. Uh, is having uh, verbal more important than nonverbal? Nonverbal more important than verbal. So you can see here, verbal communication, remember, is simply talking. So a fax um, or a phone call or an email, that's just pretty much words. So anything with communication where there are words. So what you're going to do is every time there was maybe a phone call, you're just going to put little slashes so that we can count up how many of those are happening. And you're only going to do it for the first two hours. Do not do this longer than two hours. It will drive you crazy. So for the first two hours that you are shadowing your person, you are actually really watching their behavior. 
So if they talk on the phone, if they fax, if they email, those are things that you can um, put for communication that's verbal. Now nonverbal things might be rolling eyes, smiling, waving, gesturing, all of those kinds of things. And this is, I think, where you'll be kept very busy. But again, every time these things happen, that's communication. So what's more important on the job? By the time you're done with all of this, you'll be able to see which is more important. So every time they smile or roll their eyes or maybe um, sound sarcastic or yell, you know, changing their voice inflection, that is even a type of nonverbal. You don't have to have all those types on the left-hand side, but um, or you can even add more. It doesn't matter, but just go ahead and fill out that as much as you can. And again, only for the first two hours. Number two, stress-related areas. Please, anything that is stressful in the, in, um, the you see there, maybe when um, it's a time of day, maybe it's a certain rush hour time of day, um, maybe it's somebody walks in the room and all of a sudden it, it, everybody gets real quiet. What, what looks to be stressful in that job? That's very important for us to know in the class. And again, you're going to come back and share all this information with us in the class. Number three, describe the physical atmosphere of the work site. So what does it physically look like? Um, you know, are there rules, um, no pictures on the wall? Is it line work? Is it clean? Are there pictures? Is it very comfortable? Is it cozy? Is it dirty? You know, describe the physical atmosphere. Look around. Um, like in my classroom, lots of pictures, desks, technology, um, you know, things like that. So describe that atmosphere. Number four. Describe the emotional atmosphere. Is it fun? Um, are people joking around? Is it really laid back? Or does it seem really stressful? So describe what you feel the atmosphere is like. Number five, you're going to take a snapshot of the workday. Kind of like thinking about if you stopped and just kind of looked around and took a snapshot with your mind. What's happening during that time? So again, to start with the, what time... Um, the day started. So whatever time your day started, say it starts at 8 o'clock, um, then put 8 o'clock and that you punched in, okay? Then on the hour around that, you know, try to do it on the hour, like at 9 o'clock, what's going on? Maybe you had a coffee break at that time. Then at 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock. So if you start at 8, do it on the hour. Maybe as you're driving in at 7, 10 in the morning, uh, your parent gets a phone call and it has something to do with work, kind of an emergency call, something happened. Well, that's what time your day just started, 7.10. You'd put emergency phone call, then 8.10, 9.10, 11.10, 12.10. Continue out throughout the entire day. Just take a little snapshot with your, with your brain and write down basically what's happening during that time of day. Another document that you're going to need to do is the career shadow interview. This is really important because you're going to interview the person that you're shadowing finding it out about how they got their career, the kind of interview they went through, the kind of um, college they had to have or training or what kind of training they continue to have, and even finding out if they didn't have this career, what would they be interested in doing. So make sure you take care of this. Um, please tell the person that you are shadowing that this will take you about 15 minutes to do. So what would be the best time of day in the work day to do this interview? Sometimes people could do it at lunch or their break or maybe they don't have time um, except for late in the afternoon, whatever. But ask them when's the best time. Please do not wait to do this at home if this is your parent or guardian because you tend not to get it done and you really should do it in the work site. So make sure you complete this. It's really interesting to find out information about them. When you are all done, you are going to fill out this document, and this is, tends to be ones that people forget to fill out when the day is all done. Um, think about a reflection on your day. You know, were there surprises that happened to you? What was the best part of your day? You know, how were you treated? Um, what do you think other people would think about this job? Uh, what suggestions do you have? So take a look at this and uh, do a reflection and fill this out as well. Uh, again, most students um, fill this out, but sometimes people forget about this document, so make sure you take time to do this. So these are the documents that you need to have for the career shadow. Um, it's really important that you fill all of them out and that you have all of them because they are worth 100 points. Plus, you are out an entire day, and you need to be collecting all kinds of data, and um, this is the information that you're going to need to have. And when we come back, 
you will share this with the class, so you do need to have all of this information. Finally, since um, there will still be some time in class today, um, what I want you to do is to uh, go into Moodle, and we're going to wrap up all the things that we talked about when it came to getting a job. We had the job um, simulation interviews with Tani Mo from the Minnesota Workforce Center. You worked on your resume, and if that is not done, you should definitely take time to finish that up because that is going to be required, so make sure that's finished up. And then I want you to go down, it's the last post under job interviews in Moodle, and open up preparing for the interview. Um, what you're going to do is you're going to go into this, it's a Google Doc, so make a copy, make a copy so that you can write on it, and it will be in your Google Docs then, and answer 10 out of the 20 questions, and answer them fully. Fully think about what you would actually say, um, so fill those out, and then also your references are very important to have. So that will go into uh, Shobi when you are done. So it's called preparing for the interview and do 10 out of the 20 questions, follow the instructions and also list your references. And that will wrap up the rest of the time you have in class today. If you have any questions at all, please make sure you email me and I will be watching email to make sure if you have any questions. Have an absolutely great day on Monday the 21st. Um, if you did not turn in your permission form, just simply bring it in um, on Friday or um, you can also make sure that you uh, drop it off with Kim or Lynn in the office um, and I will have to be calling uh, parents and guardians if I don't have those in because I do need to have permission or else you're unexcused so please make sure that um, you let me know that maybe you forgot it that you'll drop it off on Monday or um, you could actually maybe take a picture of it with your iPad and uh, email it to me and then I'd have it as well if you forgot it. So that's another option for you. So again, if you have any questions, make sure you email me and let me know if you've forgotten your permission form or it's at home and uh, you can just take a picture, email it to me and make sure I have the signature page. So again, have a great time and I'll talk to you soon.